Hello, my squishies! It's Friday, it's 6 pm, it's time for some belting. Uh, so, hopefully, you guys are hearing me. Normally, the lag is a couple of maybe 30 seconds, so I'll wait for somebody to say hi in the comments before I do anything exciting. And then we will start belting. So, I'll give you Five more, well, a couple more seconds, and then we'll start. I hope everyone can hear me okay, and that we are all good. One day I'll start this smoothly, but not today. Today I'll ramble for a wee bit first. Yeah, we have somebody, I am here. Excellent. Welcome to the Felt Along. Today is a little bit magical. As you can see, the oh, I can never point in the right direction. There, we're going to be doing hello, hello. We're going to be doing the Glenfinnan Viaduct, and this has a very special place in my heart. I'll get this out of the way at the start. I used to be a trolley dolly on this steam train and passed this viaduct or went over the viaduct twice a day for six days for a summer, and it was amazing. So. This basically used to be the view from my office, if you imagine I was on the train. But enough of my rambling, let's get to some felting. So for those of you who haven't felted before, we're going to do a quick introduction. In your kit, you should have everything that you need to do this picture. So I'll walk you through the stuff in the kit first. So you'll have a nice big bit of foam to felt onto. You'll have, your, this is called pre-felt. This has got a basic out. Ooh, I'm going to do this a lot. This has got the basic outline of what we're going to draw. This is what we felt onto. You've also got your needles and a needle holder. So you can use the needles without using this grip, but it is easier with the grip. So to use this, I'll do this twice, nice and slowly. You pull out the wee plug. There, you'll see there's a wee groove along it, and you pop the needle. In the groove with the hook end of the needle going on the smaller end the thinner end which you then pop back into the holder and then you can stab like that it was an amazing view from my office i loved every single day of that job um but uh, sorry yes so needle do this one more time you have your holder you pull out the wee plug Look for the wee groove, pop the needle into the groove with the hook over the smaller end and it's the smaller end that pops back in. Perfect. I don't tend to use these for this, but this is a really good tool, really useful and I would recommend starting using this. When you're, you'll see me a lot holding multiple needles to get the felting done faster. That's why I don't tend to use it, but you can buy grips that have multiple needles in them as well. So we've got the foam mat we're felting onto. We've got the pre-felt that we're making the picture on needles. And last but not least, the most important thing, we have the colored fiber itself. So this has come off the sheep. It's been washed, dyed and brushed. It's, the technical term for this is commercial tops but you can call it tops or roving. Now to work with this, we're going to use surprisingly little every time. So we want to get good at pulling off just little bits from this. So there's a couple of tricks to that. So if you have your hands too close together, you're not gonna be able to pull it because you're fighting against the length of the hair. If I pull gently with my hands far apart, you'll see that that is the natural length of the hair, the wool fiber that's in the tops so if you have your hands close together it's not going to pull but if you have your hands nice and far apart you can pull gently but if there's any twist in it it's also not going to pull the twist even if i have my hands far apart because it's the twist will hold it together that's what makes wool that's a uh, yarn sorry it's twisted wool so yeah hands nice and far apart and we're going to pull little bits at a time except for this first bit where I'm going to tell you to pull a little bit more so 
as I normally do, I like to start at the top and work down. Now we're going to try very hard this to not go over where the train is, or at least to remember where the train's going to go. But we're going to start at the top and work our way down. Now when you're felting, for those of you that haven't felted before, what you do is you pull a little bit, lay it down where you want it to go. So it is essentially colour by numbers, which I love. And you want to felt it in, not bending the needle. So you want to go in and out, you don't want to bend it at all. You can go in at an angle, that's fine. But you always want to be going in and out without bending, because bending is when needles get snapped. So it's a really good idea. So I'm going to just felt along while I'm chatting now. I'm just going to fill up this top area with blue. Um, so it's a really good idea to count your needles in and out as you're going out for each project so that you don't lose a needle. And if a needle does break, it does happen, then dispose of it safely. I sort of like to tape them up a little bit and put them in something to keep them safe. I'm just going to fill in this guy here. Now, I'm going <laughs> to try not to tell too many steam train stories while I'm doing this today because it might bore you all, but it was amazing fun working on the train going over here. Sometimes I would say, uh, so this train, this view is not just famous for steam trains from the enthusiast point of view, but I believe there was a movie with this viaduct in it and there was a car somewhere. So I used to sometimes play the Harry Potter theme tune on my phone as I was going across the viaduct at work. And if that isn't magical, I don't know what is. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I would dress up as a Dementor and run up and down the corridors. I have made children cry. There we go. So to start off with, I'm not too worried about felting this in in inverted commas really well. I just want to get the colour in the places I want it to be and then we'll work back over it. So don't worry about making it look perfect and getting the perfect angles just now. Just we're doing blocking and colour. So like when you're painting we're blocking in colour and just putting it all down and then we'll work into it, felt it up properly later. Later on even. So we've got, I'm happy with that rough amount of blue. I'll probably add some more in later. But now we're going to work from the top of the hills. Oh, I'm just going to move that. Top of the hills down. And we're going to build up layers of colour for this. So don't worry if there's little gaps and things, they'll get filled. So I'm going to start with the darkest of the greens, the foresty green. I'm going to work the hills from here to about level with this, which will be a loch. <laughs> um, it isn't quite a loch just now, it's a blob. To about level with the blob. And again, so you can lay your fibre down any way you like. Different ways of laying it down will have different effects. Like I tend to lay it down quite horizontally for the sky and again for the hills, but you can shape the way it is and it will have a subtle but a real effect so I like to angle it going down the hill and that gives it a nice smooth edge and your hills can be any shape you want them to be this is your own interpretation of my sort of vague design and here is a really important point I'm going to tend to go over this outline so definitely cover it all the way round because when you put it in the frame you want to make sure there are no white gaps at the edge so it's easier to just let it spill over just now because we will cut and tidy up this edge at the end so don't worry about it spilling over again I'm just gonna I am just quickly laying down these shapes and colours this isn't this isn't well felted in, this is just sort of stabbed in lightly because 
if later on we decide before we've finished it I don't like that colour there the nice thing about felting is that I could literally just now pull it up and replace it somewhere else once you've felted it in a bit better it's harder but especially just now you've got that freedom nothing's fixed in permanently here I'm just working on the hills. I'm going over into the sky a little bit and that's totally fine. I don't want a little white line there. There we go. I might fade it. So to fade it I'm just going to take a tiny amount and let it be let it be gappy? Probably a word. Let it be gappy down there. So you'll see that through the colour that we put on top of it. Hey Donna! And now, so we've got the darkest green and we're going to do with this bottom half. It's going to have a base of the middle green before we put just highlights of the lightest green on top. So this middle green, we're essentially going to fill in this whole area, but I'm going to make sure to leave the train blank because I want to keep that curve there. Although everybody's curves are going to be different um, and that is totally fine because this fabric that we're working on to this pre-felt, oh, that's another good point, this pre-felt is not fully felted. So as we are stabbing, it's shrinking slightly and moving slightly. And now is a really good point, uh, time to remember. Every so often, it's a really good idea to pull your work off the mat because you'll see that it's starting to stick to the mat. That's a good sign. You can look at the back and see all the little felty bits. This shows, this is what felting is. You're locking the color through the backing fabric. But when you've taken it off, you've got room to sort of squish and move it around and make stuff straight and give it a good smoosh and those needle marks you'll see start to disappear if you smoosh it slightly. On my level. Yep, so let's do some green. So this is the middle green. I'm going to fill up this whole area. But being careful to leave and leaving the lock as well, obviously. But you can move stuff about. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. If you want to make your lock slightly different, it's up to your artistic artistic license. And I think if mum is watching in on this, I don't know if she remembers this, but she used to talk about artistic license all the time. And I thought it was like a driving license and you had to kind of apply for it and get an actual license to be artistic. But you don't. You can just be artistic. There's no rules. So I'm filling in down here. Most of this will get taken up with the viaduct so you don't have to be too particular. And we're going to go over and put shadows in and stuff. So just to get a, a base colour around here is what we're wanting. Today this monitor for me is at a different angle and I keep looking to it. <laughs> I will stab my hand at one point I reckon. Okay. Vague colour is starting to take shape. Let's pop in the lock just to get it in there and I love this colour blocking stage because you've still got all the freedom and I really like it when it's fluffy all the freedom to shift about so I'm I've just taken a little bit here and I'm kind of smooshing it up pre-smooshing it so it fits into the size of the lock There we go. So we've got our lovely little lock there. Now that lock is in real life a lot longer, but I thought I'm going to use my artistic license and uh, 
make it just a little off. Because it does actually kind of go all the way into the distance. But you can make the loch shape. There we go. There you go. So that little point there just, I think, will give it a sort of going into the distancey feel. There we go. Now, let's work some of the mid green. And we're going to be sort of over, going over this area and a little bit up into the base of the hills with this green. But you don't have to lay it down straight. I'm actually going to kind of be smooshy with it and smooshy is totally a technical term. Uh, pre-smoosh it so that the fibres are mixing up and going in slightly different directions for this bit here and pulling it open. I'm going to try and leave just around the loch without any of the lighter green. You can see how much tiny amount I pulled out there so that's the whole thing. That's that little tiny bit has made such a difference on here. I might even think that's a little bit too much. I'm going to put a little bit less. There we go. Because I still want to be able to see the green underneath. Again, I say this, I've said this a lot in previous ones and I will say it again. So little tiny amounts make such a big difference. You'd be amazed. There we go. Even and you can mix up and put so this is the darkest green. I'm just going to blend that even more by putting a little bit more on top. So I'm layering up those colours. And now I'll pre-warn everybody who hasn't done this before. This stage is the messy stage. It's not gonna look like you think it should look and you're gonna slightly panic that it's not looking as good as it should but this is perfectly normal the more you felt it the more it will come together just now we're just imagine taking a massive paintbrush and making big strokes is what we're doing just now and it will when we start putting in the finer detail and felting it in properly you're gonna be like oh my god it's done a thing And I'm going to be so proud of all of you. So here I'm going to make sure I've got this green going right the way down to where the train's going to be because that really makes the train stand out. If you don't put that green right the way down to the train, you'll find the train will disappear slightly. Okay, I'm going to do a quick recap of what we've got so far. And then we're going to start, you can see I'm pulling up bits again, just to place them in different areas. Um, re quick recap of what we've done so far. And then we're going to start putting the train and the viaduct in. And then we've finished the colour blocking. And we can go on to some exciting things. Okay, so I started off with the blue in the sky in that top little section there. Then went to the darkest green and filled in the top of the hills down to in line with the sort of points of the loch. Then the mid foresty green was from the middle of the loch all the way down to the bottom. And I've just noticed I will go a little bit further down so that when I put it in the frame, it'll fit. It also got sidetracked there. Uh, also, if you felt a slightly larger area, you've got a little bit more freedom to choose exactly the where your frame is going to sit, which can be useful. Okay, so I was where was I? The foresty green all the way to the bottom, missing out where the train and the viaduct are going to be, which is there. I then took the lightest green, went over the sort of blended the join almost so a little bit onto the darker green 
all over this lighter green there but trying to avoid around the very edge of the loch so it makes it look like that's sort of a lush bit of vegetation around the loch. Perfect! Now it's train time. So we've got a few colours we're going to use in the train. Or should we do? No, let's do viaduct first. Let's get viaduct out of the way and then pop the train on top of the viaduct. So the viaduct is the fuzzy grey. And your viaduct may look slightly different from my viaduct. You can have longer or shorter legs. You've got freedom to play around. There is no correct viaduct. So I'm just pulling quite a thin. So we are going to lay this down straight. So we're going to do the top of the viaduct first. So I'm getting a nice thin bit that's about the right length. And I'm going to hold it and twist one end a couple of times. So you can see it's twisting it up. And then I'm just going to pop that down on the line of the curve. So you want a slight curve to it. We'll be adding a lot more, so don't worry if you can see through it just now. And we can also wiggle this curve around a lot, so don't worry if your curve isn't perfect or don't worry if it's missing green bits. Have I said don't worry enough yet? Probably not. Don't worry. There we go. So that's the rough line of the viaduct. I think I want it to go down a little bit further. I'm just gonna Yeah. Rough line of the viaduct there. Gonna add a little bit more on top. So he stands out nice and proud. And then I think it's train time. So the size of your train So the, this colour, the viaduct wool is natural, so that's not been dyed. This one and the darker one are just two, so this is all Shetland wool that we're using. Sorry, for those of you that can't see the comments after it's been live, I've just been asked a question in the comments from Jennifer about the wool, whether it's dyed or not. So the bright colours are all dyed and it's Shetland wool that we're using. And Shetland wool comes in a variety of natural colours, which are absolutely wonderful. And they all have different names. There's over 20 names for the different coloured sheep in Shetland. Um, so these are two that have been undyed under the natural. And you can see the lovely variation if you pull it apart in the colours. Just the natural of the natural fleece. I hope that answered your question. So yeah, the size of your train will affect the way, how long you need to make your legs as well to make it seem in proportion. It is so lovely. I know spinning with this grey is, or even felting with it, is just a joy. So we're going to start with the darker red, the maroon, shall we say, and do the train. So the train doesn't go right to the end of the viaduct, he stops. His engine's going to be there and then the actual train is going to be behind it. So again, I'm going to take little bits, twist them round and pop them down. So you can be fairly abstract shall we say with your train size if you want to do a bigger train or a smaller train there is zero judgment for me a big fun train would be absolutely amazing or a tiny to scale train i like a sort of medium size so i'm just putting the dark red over i'm stopping there there was a on your drawing there was a wee line there, so this is where the engine's going to go, and the train follows behind. The engine's going to be in the darker brown, the darker natural brown. 
And again, I'm just going to take a little bit of this, twist them round, fold them up to make that's a little bit too much, I think. I'm going to take a little bit less. Less is more. We can add more in later. So, oh, I did that without explaining it. So I twisted it slightly and then folded it in half. And that gives you quite a blunt end without the wispy bits. So folding it in half, it gives you a nice, good edge to work with. We'll be doing a lot of this when we do the legs, arches. I should know this. Somebody in the comments tell me. Mum, Google it. Uh, the, <laughs> the legs or arches of the viaduct. And now that I've stabbed in the front bit there, I've got my fluffy tail. So I'm just going to fold the fluffy tail back over, stab it down, and then again fold it over, stab it down, so that it's all contained in that little engine. You can take scissors and cut the end off if you like, there is no judgement there. My scissors are just currently out of my reach. So the engine, if we, <laughs> if you want a sort of vague estimated size, the engine is a knuckle and a half of my my hands are a little bit small so like a, a thumb a thumb size compared to the rest of him there we go we have a train on a viaduct arches thanks mum again we're still color blocking just now so we're going to put a lot more detail on this train on the viaduct so don't panic now we're going to work on the arches. Uh, I completely forgot. To, I was going to look up how many arches there actually are in a viaduct, but we're not going to even attempt to get the correct number. Something in my head says 27. I could be lying. But we're going to attempt to do even... I'm going to wiggle. I, feel, I want this to be slightly more curved. So I'm going to pull him down a bit. The joy of felting is that you can just shift it. There we go. Now, remember what I said about folding is going to come into play? So you're going to take a little bit and make him slightly twisty and fold him in half. That's going to be the base of one of your legs. So you can start. I'm going to start. Where am I going to start? I could start at the short ones that get longer. So let's start over at this side. Pop him in there. I'm going to take these two ends. One end's going to go along. Am I still in focus? Yep. Yeah. 21 arches. I knew there was a 20 in there. Thanks, Mum. Uh, there. And then the other end is going to fold the other way. And so that folding that we're doing is going to create the arches. And in theory, we want them all to kind of sit doop, 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 doop. We don't want them going out at different angles. So you want them to all be chosen up. I'm doing this on a slight angle, which doesn't help me, but choosing up and try and keep them all going in that way. So it might look a little bit big just now, but as I'm felting it in, I'm going at slight angles and poking it in and it's getting smaller. Arch number one. And these arches are going to get progressively larger and then smaller again because the ground goes so again taking a bit of wool a tiny bit twisting it around folding it in half and then I'm going to leave a gap of about a centimetre for the next one now these arches I am fully prepared to admit may get shifted 
moved about, fully ripped off. There is. Okay, now once you've got them all in is when you can start to decide if that's the placement you like, but you kind of have to get them down, like you're sketching them in, and then change it up. So again, I'm pulling it apart slightly, putting in some twist, folding it in half, and putting in another arch. So again, about a centimetre apart. And just laying that down. If you're feeling brave, you can take that end and start making another archway. Twisting it and pulling it back up again or you can do them individually. So my archways today I think are a little bit fatter than they were the other day. I might need to shift them up a little bit. But just now, because we're just quickly doing a couple of stabs to hold the things in place, we're not trying to properly felt it in just now. We've got that freedom to smoosh and play and move it around and make some different shapes. So don't panic. I think is always the answer. I'm going to put a little bit more onto this one. He's going to go up, round and down, and up again. This one's getting a little bit longer again. So at the moment it's not happening, but when I was back on the train, I don't, like, I don't think it's happening anyway, there used to be two steam trains running every day. And on the way back for the morning train and the way up for the afternoon train, they would have to pass each other, So because it's a single line, they would have to pass each other at Glenfinnan station. So there would be a certain amount of time where there was two steam trains sitting one on one line, one on the other line every day and you could look in on the other steam train and it was always so cool to see the two trains passing each other. Occasionally, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I'm going to and that's fine. Because <laughs> I worked in the buffet as well. I would take a chocolate frog um, not the on brand, not the official Harry Potter chocolate frogs, but I would take a Freddo. I'd obviously pay for it from the buffet, and I would throw it into the other train, and it would land on whosoever table was there, like in the film with the frogs jumping in and out the windows. And I, that was just always fun to see their reaction, a frog landing on them. So again, I'm keeping these all parallel. And that's starting to look quite nice. So how many have I made? One, two, three, four, five, six so far. I'm on my seventh one. I think I'm going to start to get them going a little bit sm I have already started to get them. No, I want this one to be longer, I think. I'm going to keep that one a long one. So about in line with the front of the engine is when I'm going to start making them. <clears throat> oh, I've done a lot of talking today. I'm going to start making them a little bit shorter. That one's starting to get a little bit shorter there, but we're still keeping them in, keeping them in line. And again, I'm just using this tail and folding it back round. So hopefully everybody is doing okay with these arches. I would really appreciate if anybody that is felting along live with me, give me a little bit of feedback on how their arches are doing, because I can go over them again. 
So remember just now it's still they're still gonna be very wobbly and wonky and it won't be until we felted it down a little bit more that they are proper solid arches. And also we haven't put the steam in yet and we haven't finished off the shadow on the train so until all that comes together don't panic about wonkiness. But we're <laughs> Excellent. Con total concentration. Ignore all the nonsense that, that I'm rambling just now. Um, so to, to disturb you from your... Oh, I don't want to move my hood too fast. Ah, let's do it. Because uh, we're still blocking in colours. Between all the arches, I'm going to use a little bit of the dip, 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 the forest green. I hope that my uh, rambling stories of steam trains are not disrupting you from your focus. Maybe uh, a little bit of the forest, the dark, the dark green that we used at the top. We're going to fill in those arches because that's going to give it a lovely little bit of shadow. Because shadows don't have to be black. In this instance, I'm going to make them just a darker shade of green. And if there's any Discworld fans out there, you'll know that green is the, the best camouflage colour. So again, I'm just I'm kind of taking the wool for a walk. <laughs> they weren't live frogs, they were always chocolate. And I never aimed them at a person, just at the table. Yeah, taking the wool for a wee wander just under those archways. I'm letting it go underneath as well because you would find some darker foliage and stuff I guess at the base. of each of them but that they look so wonky right now they'll be fine I'm not panicking I was looking so whenever I always uh my mum is a wonderful artist and I always get her advice and dad's as well when I'm designing these and I always like to look back at the various stages of design process that I've photographed um, and sent to them on messenger and you can always see like it's an absolute state to begin with and then it sort of starts to come together and then you work on a bit more and it comes together and suddenly you just do one little tweak and it's like ah yeah perfect I believe you can definitely still get chocolate on the train um, and I, I'm gonna guess there's still Freddos there I think they also now do the official Harry Potter chocolate frogs. Don't know if they chuck them from train to train. So after I've sort of gone around the bottom, I'm going to do a little sort of almost like a mirroring of the line on top. And just level off that edge to give it that little bit of shadow. There we go. So that's lightly felted in. And around this bit where it goes off into the distance as well, I'm going to scrumple a bit of that so it disappears around the corner and into the distance. I mean, there's some in real life, there's trees it goes into and then it goes to the station where you can visit the wonderful Glenpin and Railway Museum that's on the platform. There's sometimes live musicians playing on the platform. It is wonderful. Okay, let's work on the train for a wee bit longer. So hopefully you guys have blocked in your arches. They don't have to be perfect. Just get them in because I think I'm going to make some of these longer. In fact, I'm definitely going to make some of these longer. Because I can, I'm just going to pull the wool down to make them longer and add in a bit of, bit of grey. 
but I want to get this train looking a bit more train-like before we go any further. So I want to make the engine a little bigger. Because I feel like it's not quite big enough compared to the carriages. There we go. We're now going to do some slightly, that's better, slightly delicate detail, shall I say. I'm going to take the tiniest amount of this light brown, sorry, the dark brown, and I'm going to lay this in a line where the viaduct meets the train. So I'm giving the bottom of the train a little bit of shadow. So, that's, so imagine that's where the wheels are and all that jazz. So I'm just taking that tiny bit and laying it along there. And you can take it right up to where the engine is, the local. So that just, oh, I love it. That tiny, tiny details like that. And then we're going to attempt to put some carriages in. Again, I don't want to go too fast just now. So I'm going to pause and ramble for a second. In fact, before I put the carriages, I'll let you give you guys an extra minute to put that line in there while I make a couple of my arches just a tap just a touch longer because it is they are quite they don't have to be a smooth going down either because they're just following the landscape and the hill might be bigger in places than it is in other places that's totally fine your hill does not need to look like everybody else's So while well, you guys are hopefully putting that dark brown, just where the train tra tracks, yeah, tracks and rails would be. There we go, making them slightly longer. I'm gonna make that middle one a little bit longer as well. Not middle, middle-ish, middling. So there can be a big step, that's not a problem. Yes, happy with that. Might change mind later, but so far so good. Okay, back to the carriages. So we're gonna pop in a couple of carriages. I'm trying desperately on the top of my head to remember how many carriages there were, because I used to walk up and down them multiple times every day. But we're not going to fit all the carriages in. We're going to the train's going to go over the edge on this one. So to make the carriages, you're going to take again a tiny, tiny sliver of the darkest brown. Going to fold that in half so we've got a blunt end. I do love these blunt ends, and just lay it down about the same, so about the same size as your engine. You're going to try and make each carriage. So we're going to get about three carriages here. And just going vertically, lying that down. So you can see there. And I'm going to take this tail. You can either chop it off or I'm going to lay it along and bolster up that, that line there. That's one carriage. I'm going to get a second carriage divider in. Again, taking the tiniest bit, twisting it round, folding it in half. Again, the same distance away. Perfect. And again, folding it. I'm going to take both of the ends and pop them that way. So I've got my two wee carriages there. Are they about the same? I could maybe shift this one down a wee bit. There we go. Perfect. 
perfect. And now, put your two carriages in. They don't have to be perfect. They can be as wiggly, as wobbly. I'm going out of the picture <laughs> as you want. We're going to take this lighter red, the more ready red, and we're just going to highlight doop, doop, doop the tops of the carriages where it's going to get a little bit of light hitting them. And again, I've taken, you can see the tiniest, tiniest fluff. This might even be too much and I'll regret it and take it back. I'm folding it a few times on itself. So it's kind of the right size. And just going along the top of the carriages to create that little highlight there and again for the next two carriages so I'm doing one 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 with I can happy if there's a wee gap at the end that's no problem at all so if it's it doesn't have to go right to the edges again I'm going to take the tiniest fluff fold it up a few times until it is a tiny tiny fluffy bit and to pop it on the top of the carriages there and one last time adding that little highlight to the top of the carriages does just make such a difference I think it's everything makes such a difference it, nah, it does, it's fine I stand by my statement. <laughs> there we go. So that's going off the edge there. So this is still just block colour. I'm not, I'm going to spend a good while uh, fixing it all in and fiddling with it later on. And now's a good time to pull it off the mat, have a little wiggle. And we've got one more thing we to do before we're going to try it in the frame to see how it looks and then we're going to go back in and add in loads of little do some proper felting proper felting do some more felting and put in little details and stuff so we've got the thing that makes all the difference the steam so this steam is uh, slivers so it's cheviot slivers so slivers are like tops, but they're not quite as well brushed and combed. So you'll see there's little fluffy bits and wiggly bits, and that makes it perfect for the steam. So your steam can be... I'm wiggling. Your steam can be as steamy as you like, and it can go wherever you like. You can lay it on in advance and choose where you want it to go. So you could have mahoose of steam if you wanted to or you can have just little steam you can have little puffs you are in control of your steam so it comes out not quite the very front just a little bit behind and it tends to be quite thin and there might even be a tiny gap before it becomes steam so I've taken a bit of fluff and I'm going to take an end and twist it slightly fold it back on itself to give a little sharp point that I'm going to press down into there and I know I've got a lot there but you don't have to put it all down so you can have it going up and then pressing it down and if I decide it's too much I can pull it slightly pull some of it off and I'm going to have it just going am I copying what I did before? following the train around, wiggling some down, making lighter and darker bits. Could even have it going off into a thing like that. Do I like this? Am I going to wiggle it? Am I going to have a second, a second plume? I think there's too much there. There we go, that's a bit better. Don't felt this steam down too much. It's 
especially just now. We will, I like that, that makes me happy. So it's gone, the little narrow bit has gone up and then the rest of the seam is flowing, following the curve of the train. You can even put, I may take this out later, let's see if I like it, a couple of higher ones. Hmm, no. Uh, I'll come back to that. So yeah, I've taken a little sort of thin line going up the way and then it curves around and follows the train. So I'm not going to fit that in anymore because I love the smooshiness of it. But what I am going to do is have a quick two minutes going over all of this. I think we might run over time today. We've only got 10 minutes. It's an entirely self-imposed hour ago, but we're going to go over the hour, I think, today because I want to do a little bit more faffing and fiddling before I leave you guys to it. Because it will take... So the initial felting normally takes roughly an hour. And then I like to go over it for a good... 10-15 minutes of just solidly felting everything in like I'm doing just now fix everything in and you'll see it change as you do this and it's wonderful you'll see bits that need a little bit extra colour you'll see bits that you want to fiddle with that have changed where they are Whoop. <laughs> and also I always advise everybody I've done this many times don't finish it tonight. Don't frame it up. Be reasonably happy with it tonight and then come back in a day or two and tweak it. Come back with fresh eyes because you'll get stuck looking at it just now. And it always takes a pair of fresh eyes or photograph it and send it to somebody. Hold it up in a mirror, hold it upside down, have another look at it. And you might see anything that you want to change. Or you might decide it's absolutely perfect and you didn't know what you were thinking about before. But I can see I've already got a wee gap in there. I'm going to make the edge of the lock a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to fill in that wee gap. There. And again, over there. And if you want, let's see, I didn't do this in my one I did before. Do I want to pop a tiny bit of white in the lock? Ooh, I do. Yes, so I've popped a tiny bit of white into the lock. That's just going to give it some reflections. And if you want to put, pop some of this white into the hill as well. Into the hill? Don't put it in the hill. My brain is starting to melt. Um, put it into the sky as clouds. You can totally do that. I think I might even do that. Uh, you can pop in either a few deliberate clouds by smooshing it small, or you can add just a hazy effect by spreading it out over it. And now I know on camera, this will look very different from what's in front of you because the way the light's set up on the camera. I might even try and turn it down a little bit it's very bright so you're seeing I'm also in studio lights here so everything is quite blown out compared to what yours will look like but you need to I like to be able to show you all the little bits that I've got so I have to have it Oop, very bright okay so I'm at a stage where I think all the colors where I want it to be the shapes of the stuff I'm fairly happy with now that I'm looking, that one is longer than that one, so I'm going to have to adjust them. So I'll do that in a second, but first I want to put it into the frame. So I've taken it off and it might distort slightly, it might go funny. So you can just gently tug it, get it back into shape, give it a good smoosh with your hands and you'll see so many of the needle marks just disappearing. On a hard surface, grab your frame, unscrew 
it all the way. Ooh, I'm doing this with the wrong hand. Am I doing this with the wrong hand? There we go. I can't decide if I'm left-handed or right-handed today. Okay, I'm on frame. helps if you know your left from your right and you don't try and tighten the frame instead of loosen it. There we go, right. Ah, I, I can work a frame today. <laughs> so take your, take your design, oh, uh, pop it down on top of the solid inner one and then have a quick feel of to where it is. And then you're gonna take your opened frame. So I've opened it, so I've held this little bit here and twisted it open till it's almost fully open. Let me just go a little bit further. And then sit it down where you think you want it to be and pop it in. There you go. And then just line it up so that they're sitting level with each other. And you'll see it's opened up slightly and a few gaps have been created. That is totally fine. But I'm pretty happy with that there. I think I want to make my hills slightly more. Mm, do I? Oh, I like the hills like that, I think. These ones are less up and downy, but I am totally fine with that today. My hill, my train is bigger than the last one, but I really like that. We've sort of, in this one, I've zoomed in slightly on the viaduct. And I'm for that right now. Yeah, I'm happy with the layout. I'm happy with how it's looking. I could try it if I wanted to, to have the block more centered. Then I lose one of the carriages, but then it's more... Oh, I like that too. So you've got play to move. Ooh. You can move it around and you can see how little I've put down here. I need to work on this area. You've got play to move it around and, oh, I like that shape. I actually really like, don't know if I prefer this one or the original one now. Oh, pointing there. Like I said, yours does not have to look like mine. But yeah, once, if you're, once you've finished felting it and you're super happy with how it looks, you've come back a couple of days, felted it really well on top. What you can do is pop it into the frame, tighten it up really, really tight. And then you just take a pair of scissors, sharp scissors and chop around. So you tighten it a lot tighter. I've still got play in this. You tighten it a lot tighter than I just did. So it almost came right then. Um, take some scissors, chop around the edge. So chop all this extra off until it looks like that. And it's ready to go up on your wall. But I'm going to be here for another probably 10 minutes or so, just filling in the things I've spotted and rambling some more nonsense. So what do I need to do? Somebody pay attention and remind me. So I'm going to put some more green in there. I'm going to take the blue down to there. I'm going to work on this area. So that's my two, three plans, three plans of action. I should probably mention, I don't, I never mention this. You don't have to put it in the frame if you don't want to. You can leave it as a picture like this. You can frame it in a different frame. I just really like the round frames. If you want to make it a square picture, you can add extra onto the side. I'm just giving you the tools and ideas to do one thing, but you're free to vary. 
do. So this is still quite fluffy as I'm looking at it. I definitely need to give it a good, a good felting for about 10, 15 minutes of just solidly felting it. So to blend that into the lighter green, I'm just taking tiny amounts of the darker green and like tiny, tiny amounts and laying them on top. And remember, you can always, I mean, no, you can't because you're watching me live. But for those that are not watching, watching live, you can always rewind, pause it, fast forward. Or what my flatmate geniusly told me today, yesterday, this morning, at some point recently, that you can also shut me up, put me on mute and set the playback to like three or four or five times speed. And you can watch me do it super fast um, without me rambling nonsense. If you, I should have mentioned this at the start, um, if you want a quick recap or if you've missed any bits, you can go back that way and find the bits that you've missed. Right, I need to work on quickly get into there, make that a little bit more pointy. And then I'm going to work on my arches because I didn't, as promised, go back over them. So I wonder where you guys are just now. Is anybody at the same place as me? Anybody still on their arches? So right, let's pull this arch down there. So I love that you can just, because I haven't felt it in very well, I can just pull them and reshape them. I can push that one up. I can, if I go in at an angle like that, that felt it up. And now they're definitely, ah, that's already much better. I'm going to go over these, just step, step, stepping for a while. And you'll spot that they get, if you go over the center of them, they start to felt in and get a little bit smaller. I'm trying to be vaguely careful where I'm felting hard. So again, I'm going over the center of the inner arches and the center of the arches. So there was a couple of different engines that would run the front of the train I'm trying so it was a ah yes I need to go back and get my hills right as well very good point Jennifer thank you definitely was I going to make them slightly more uppy steep steep Uppy is not the technical term. Make the hill slightly steeper. Yeah, let's make the hill slightly steeper. So I'm just popping it on top of the blue. That also solves the problem of the slight gap that I had. Better to have the fibre of nearer things over the fibre of stuff that's further away than to have, say, the blue coming over the green. If that makes a lick of sense, I don't know. I'm gonna... You can... Yeah, should I? Oh! tiny, tiny amount of the darker brown in the top of the hills to give it some shadows and some depth. Are they thick enough? Yeah. 
can also put some more of the lighter green up there in erratic places. But again, tiny, tiny. Let's put in a little bit more of the lighter green there. So now that I've got, you'll notice I'm sort of flitting around. So I'm not working on any specific area. I'm just changing a bit, changing another bit, kind of wiggling it all. Because I don't want to get stuck on one area because your eyes get tired and you don't kind of see what you're doing after a while. And put in a bit more green there. Okay, I'm relatively happy. Do I buy my... Can I make them a bit longer? What? Uh, somebody... I'm gonna... This is going to be a democratic vote. Somebody in the comments tell me, do I make my arches, technical term, a little bit longer? Or do I keep them like that? <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. I can't wait to see yours. Oh yeah, I haven't said that yet. Uh, please post photos of your finished designs in the Facebook group. I love seeing them. I don't always get to the comments right away because I always get. But I do have my... Uh... <laughs> I have somebody who loves me very much telling me every so often that there's a comment I should go and check. I adore seeing the photos in the Facebook group because you guys are all so talented. I'm just giving it, and you'll see as you stab it more, it kind of tidies itself up. And what you thought looked like a little bit of a, a mess suddenly just becomes a beautiful tidy. I'm trying to still avoid the fluffy. Thank you Jennifer! I'm trying to avoid felting that in because I want it to look nice and fluffy. Does anybody want me to go over any bits again or are we all comfortable? Remember after as soon as this is as soon as I click finish, this is up and you can rewind it and watch it again and skip to the bits that you want to pay attention to. Oh, it's a little bit of an arm workout. I would generally take more breaks and have a cup of tea while I'm doing this, but I'm keen to get it to a nicely felted state. And I think I'll give it a couple more minutes. We'll run 10 minutes, 15 minutes over. I'm totally fine with that. I want to make that. I know I said about stuff in the back being behind. I'm just gonna put green a little bit higher to make it less. I like that, there we go. I think I'm gonna do that to, but yeah, I think they're the right length. I want to make their tops a little bit higher and I've just done that by taking a tiny bit of green, the dark green, and looping it and popping it up. So that my bridgy bit is not as 
long, deep, deep. You can also thin out your archways that your uh, yeah your arches that way. I've run out of chat. I'm just concentrating on finishing this now. Do I have any more stories of steam trains? Uh, no, but it was so much fun. There we go. <laughs> slightly, <laughs> that one's slightly drunk. Thanks, Mom. And this one needs a little bit higher as well. You can also, uh, when you come back to look at this afterwards, you can do a quick Google of. Glenfin and Viaduct. It'll come up with pictures. So if you want to wiggle your arches around at all, you can do that. But yeah, I think I'm coming to an end. I'm pretty happy with this. I see steam tra Oh, but we've the magic car. I can't wait to see it, Jennifer. So the car in the movie that may fly next to this train, I believe is a blue car. It's almost a sky blue, I think. Now I haven't tried fitting the car in yet. So this is very much a, let's experiment because it's not in the official one. There is in the, the official Glenfin and Viaduct felt along. There is technically no car. But if you wish to put a car in, you can use this blue and I would put it like maybe because it flies following the train. You don't want to put it in the sky because you're not going to see it. So I'd maybe take just the tiniest blue dot. And we're not going to be uh, trying to do a realistic car. So I scrunched this up into a tiny pre scrunched thing. Pop that there. This is not staying, but take a tiniest bit of black or the dark brown, scrunch that up again, and maybe try that along the bottom to give the idea of wheels and or just something under there. There you go, that blue blob. I might even pop a little bit more of the dark. <laughs> this is this is. There you go. That's going to be a windscreen. Official flying fish slash blue car. Blue car is entirely at your own responsibility. <laughs> I'm taking them out. But if you do wish to pop in the magical flying car, I am more power to you. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys here now because I have to go for a swim in the river. I'm going to just quickly pop this in a frame and leave you with a finished. So again, where did I decide? It was going to be slightly more central. Oh, definitely down a bit. And down a bit more. So I'm trying to line up that with the centre. I've shut this over a wee bit. I thank you guys so much for joining me. It has been wonderful fun as ever. I'm really looking forward to seeing these finished. This is clearly not finished. It's going to take me maybe another half hour or so of felting and fiddling. But we've got the gist of it. You know how to do it. I 100% believe in you. So, how about that? 
So I zoomed in, I'll show you. Ah, there we go. Zoomed in viaduct there. Perfect. So you can make them longer or shorter. You can make your train bigger or smaller. But I'm really happy with that. Thank you guys. I'm signing off. I will see you in the Facebook group. Oh, also, uh, the YouTube things, please like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it all. Have a wonderful... Oh, my mouse has fallen asleep.